Hello everyone and welcome to the video where I want to walk with you through the problems where we're going to be calculating limits algebraically. Those are very classical examples which you might find on your exams and that's why it's good to see how someone else doing them step by step and then you practice by yourself as well. The first limit is 8 over a plus h minus 8 over a all over h. The first thing you want to do is to create a common denominator in the numerator of that fraction. I would recommend not to touch h up until the last moment. And maybe use different colors to indicate what is happening in the numerator. The common denominator will be a plus h times a. Then I will multiply by a, the left fraction, and by a plus h, fraction on the right. On the left hand side I will have 8a minus, and then I will distribute a and a plus h minus 8a, and don't forget to distribute the negative sign, so minus 8h. This way as you can see, 8a and minus 8a, they go away, and we are end up to be with limit h goes to zero. Don't forget to keep writing a limit every time because that's important. Don't touch h at, uh, until the last moment. But now, not only h is in the denominator, and you don't want to keep having those fractions with fractions, whatever is happening over here in the denominator should go down to, the, uh, to join h in the denominator because it's all in the denominator. So I will use blue color for you to understand that this part came from the denominator of the numerator. What stays on the top? Minus 8h. And that's a key moment when you finally can divide by h, cancel it out. And that uh, was the whole key because h in denominator as h goes to zero is a troublemaker. You cannot divide by zero and that's why we could not calculate this limit right away. So we perform some kind of simplification, factoring and so on to cancel out that h in the denominator. Now let me write down what stays and how beautiful this limit looks after cancelling it out, that h. We have negative 8 at the top. Now check yourself, now you can plug h equals 0 and no division by 0 anymore. So the answer is minus 8 all over a squared. Put it in the box. Question, do you know why we had the rights to cancel out h? We cannot cancel out everything. Things that are zeros cannot be cancelled out in a fraction like this. But h is not zero. And that's why we were able to do it. How do we know that h is not zero? h is approaching zero, but might never reach it. That's the definition of the limit. We're approaching something, but might never reach whatever we're approaching. Now, Oh, also, I will show you the notation. Sometimes people show like this, it goes to zero. Second example, we have a limit. And here we have 3a plus h squared minus 3a squared all over h. Do you remember the formula? The formula for the uh, square of sum and difference. So I will write down x plus minus y squared. That's the formula we'll be using right now. Square the first term plus or minus double product of the first term and the second term plus square the second term. Reminding you this formula, you'll be using it for many, many math classes. So just recommending you to learn it once and then be happy that you know it forever. Let's use it in the numerator. Limit as h goes to zero. Again, don't touch h up until the last moment when it cancels out. Now, in the numerator, I will have 3, and then I will write down a squared plus 2ah plus h squared minus 3a squared. Write down limit again and distribute. Don't forget writing the limit every time. Distribute the 3. 3a squared plus 3 times 2 is 6. A h plus 3h squared minus 3a squared. As you can see, 3a squared and 3 and negative 3a squared go away. And now actually you can skip the step 
and immediately factor out and divide by this h over here. But I will not skip this step for you to know what happened and have good note. But the more you do these problems, the more you understand which steps are actually easy to skip. So I'm going to factor out h in the numerator to cancel it out with the h in the denominator. Then what is, what is going to stay? 6a plus 3h. That's the key moment. h and h goes away. And now you can skip the step again. h goes to 0. This is the h that goes to 0. You can choose different color and say this term goes to 0. So the answer is 6a. Put it in the box. I'm saying put it in the box because it's just nice to box the answer. If anyone will ask you what's the answer, you have it in front of you in the box. Third example. Calculate the limit x minus 10 and x cubed minus all over x cubed minus 1000. So here's the formula we're going to be using. We have two formulas, the sum of cubes or the difference of cubes. So which one do you think we should use in this example? You don't have to memorize these formulas, but many people actually do remember them because they have square inside of it. The sum and kind of the piece over here reminds you the different the square of the difference. Only two is missing. And so on. We're gonna be using difference of cubes. So the second formula is important in this example. Here it is. And that will speed up the process. So we're going to have a limit x minus 10 and then difference of cube formula tells me that it's going to be x minus 10 times x squared plus 10x plus 100 because we multiplied 10 by x over here based on this formula and then what is going to what x is going to 10 oh at the first Time actually, the first step maybe we could just plug x equals 10 and calculate the limit right away. But as always, there's a troublemaker in the denominator. 10 cube is 1000, so 1000 minus 1000 gives you 0, and division by 0 happens. And that's why we're doing this, we're trying to simplify somehow. Okay, as you can see, we can cancel out, we can cancel out x minus 10 and x minus 10, and either you rewrite everything or you just do the way I do it. You immediately can find where your x is and plug that x approaches 10. So x squared approaches 100 and then 10 times 10 approaches 100 as well. So the answer becomes 1 all over 100 plus 100 plus 100. And that's 1 over 300. Put it in the box. Hope you're making, having fun with these problems. We are almost done. The next problem has difference of square roots. And that probably reminds you that we're going to be using something like multiplication by the conjugate. What does it mean to multiply by the conjugate? That means I'm looking at this difference of square roots and I'm going to multiply by the sum of these square roots. But since I cannot just multiply by something and assume that the, ends, that the fraction become, stays the same, I will have to divide by the same thing. So let's do it. We're going to have a square root 5a plus h plus the square root 5a. Same thing in the denominator. Now, whatever is happening in the numerator together, can be simplified using the difference of square formula. This formula, just like the square of sum and differences, should be known by heart because you'll be using it quite a lot for many years. Difference of squares formula. In this case, I'm working from the right to left. I have a minus b times a plus b. That means square a, square b, and write down the difference. And that's why it's convenient. We, can, we are getting rid of square roots by squaring each square root. Let's write down limit. h goes to 0, a huge denominator. What is in the denominator? h, and also that part on the right. 5a plus h plus 100 
plus 5a. That's piece from the multiplying by the conjugate. Now in the numerator will be different. You need to square each piece and write down the difference. So it's going to be 5a plus h minus 5a. Very nice. Now, as you can see, when I'm going to distribute a, and when I'm going to distribute 5, 5a will go away. Limit. h goes to 0. h and a huge square root 5a plus h plus a square root 5a. 5a plus 5h minus 5a. 5a minus 5a goes away. Now, h and h already cancels out right away as well. If you want, I can rewrite it, but um, yeah, I will rewrite it for you. But basically, h cancels out. You have 5h at the top, h at the bottom. And that's the troublemaker, so that's the one we want to get rid of. The h that goes to 0. And indeed, it goes away, but h also approaches 0. So now I can say everywhere where I see h, it goes to 0. So this h goes to 0. And the answer is, you see, the moment I'm plugging h approach 0, I can stop writing limit. So now limit is gone. And the answer is 5 all over. Carefully we'll plug everything in. So we're going to have the square root of 5a plus 0. So that's just 5a plus a square root of 5a. And that's 5 over 2 square roots of 5a. But do you know how to rewrite those kind of problems if you don't want to have a square root of 5a in the denominator? I can use the fact that 5 is square root of 5 times square root of 5. Then one of these square roots will cancel out. And the answer will have only 5 square root of 5 in the numerator and then 2 square root of a in the denominator. I personally don't see why this answer is better than the answer before, but just for you to know that you have options how to write down those answers. Two left. Let's calculate the limit of sine of 4x all over 9x as x approaches 0. To calculate this limit, you need to know one of the important limits. And I hope you do know that the limit as theta, theta that's the angle, approaches 0 of sine of theta over theta, that's 1. That's one of the world known limits. In the Russian and Ukrainian culture, we even called it a wonderful or amazing limit. It actually has a terminology. Uh, incredible, incredible limit. So it means that around 0, sine and theta, uh, so sine theta and theta behaves the same. So the ratio gives you one. They have the same slope. That's the idea. It would be nice if instead of 9x, we would have 4x. Then I would use this formula. Sine, I would write down. In our case, I would have sine of 4x over 4x. As limit x goes to 0 is 1. How is that so? As x approaches 0, 4x approaches 0. Since 4x approaches 0 and it's the same on the top and at the bottom, uh, the answer will be 1. So it would be nice to have that. But we have that 9 which messes everything up. Well, then let's put 4 instead of 9. I will have 9 outside and then 4x sine of 4x. But I cannot just divide by 4 and pretend that nothing happened. So I will multiply by 4. Outside. Now this limit, like I already told you, as x approaches 0, gives you 1. So the answer will be 4 over 9 times 1, which is 4 over 9. Very cool idea. 
that basically this piece over here by itself goes to 1 as x approaches 0. Because as x approaches 0, the angle for x approaches to 0 as well. That was pretty fast. But to do this problem, you need to know this property of sine theta over theta. And the last one. The last one. First of all, maybe we should check. If I plug negative 9, maybe I don't have any problem. But indeed, if I plug negative 9 inside of the denominator, I'm getting 0. So you need to simplify somehow. Okay, let's do that. I'll write down limit. X approaches negative 9. And huge fraction. At the top, I will use the difference of squares formula. We already used it before. Check it out in the, begin in the middle of the video. X minus 9 times x plus 9. Now at the bottom I will factor out 2. If I do that, let me write it down separately. If I factor out 2, I will have x squared plus 11x plus 18. Makes sense. But x squared plus 11x plus 18 can be written as x plus 9 and then x plus 2. In this fraction, who is a troublemaker when it comes to the limit? Well, when I approach, when x approaches negative 9, x plus 9 eh, gives me 0, so I'm dividing by 0. But now I can cancel it out, so it makes sense that the simplification we just did worked. The limit becomes x approaches negative 9, x minus 9, all over 2, x plus 2. Plug, it, plug in negative 9, and if it still doesn't work and you have some kind of problem, simplify more. But in this case, you don't have any more problems. Negative 18 at the top, 2 times negative 9 plus 2, that's negative 7, at the bottom. So the answer is 9 over 7. Amazing job. Very fast, convenient. We did 6 problems on finding limits algebraically. Hope it was helpful and see you in my next video. Good luck.